right, everyone. We want to thank you for your support as we reached our goal. Now we want to keep on pushing forwards. So please help us and share it with your friends and family so that we can get those stretch goals. We had a lot of people asking for a rear motor option. So we've added that for you. You can now get it as an add on. So we now have a short video of JP installing the rear motor so that you can make the decision if that's a right fit for you. But we also still recommend the front motor option as a standard because that's the easiest one to install, the most compatible between bikes. But if you want a rear motor because you have a mountain bike or you just know you want a rear motor, check out the video and thank you for your support. Hi guys, this is JP from Unlimited. In this video, we're gonna show you how to mount a rear motor how to install a rear motor of one of our kits that we just announced. The video is just gonna focus on the rear motor. So for the battery installation or the pedal cell installation, in this bike is the same, it's the same in all bikes. So please refer to Carlos' videos from before, you can find it in the description. To install the rear motor, we always recommend, just as removing any rear wheel, go to the hardest gear. So put the derailleur on the hardest gear. And then if you can, just try to take the chain out of the way. If the chain has a quick release, you, you can maybe remove it, take the opportunity to clean it also. If you don't wanna do that and just wanna like leave it there, just if you can try to take it out of the way, it'll help uh, with the motor installation. We're gonna have to remove the rear wheel, swap the tire because this is a mountain bike. And even though the kit comes with the tire, we want this tire on our motor and then swap the rotor because we also want our rotor from our brake, right? To keep the same bike. To remove the wheel, we now have the chain off already. The railer is all the way out. We wanna undo the skewer. Give yourself a little bit of clearance by undoing it a bit, a bit further and just take the wheel out. So, after taking the wheel out, we will have to do two things. We'll have to move the brake disc, which is almost the same every time in all bikes. It depends on the size, but the screws and everything is almost the same. And in this case, because this is a cassette, Shimano cassette bike, we're gonna have to remove the cassette and put it on the motor. To remove the brake disc, in this case, it's a Torx T25. It, that's the most common size, but you can also, depending on the bike that you have or whatever, it could be hex. So you need to check. So I have my T25 Torx tool here. I'm gonna undo the disc. Make sure you push firmly towards the screw so that you don't strip it. And then go in a cross pattern. So if you did this one first, do the opposite one. Undo all of them first before unscrewing them completely. When removing the disc, try not to touch the braking part where, you, where the pads touch. And take note of the rotation. So most brake discs are marked with a rotation direction. Usually also like all letters and all the marks and everything uh, is usually pointing towards the outside of the bike. So if you're unsure of the rotation, usually that's also a good way. If you can see this one doesn't have anything on the inside, but everything on the outside. And we want to put this on a nice table, maybe over some clean paper towel, just not to touch it or put grease on it in any way. Now that we have undone the disc and we have the disc ready to go, we want to also remove the cassette. When removing the quick release skewer, just be careful not to lose the little, the little springs there. So for this, you're gonna need um, a cassette removal tool. This is a very common tool that every bike shop has. If you don't feel confident doing this, we recommend that you go to your nearest bike shop. Um, they should be able to take care of this pretty easily. And then you'll need this socket, which is also a cassette removing socket, also available at every bike shop. But if you don't feel confident on doing this, the bike shop shouldn't charge much for this. It should take like five minutes for them. Okay, so here's our wheel without disc, without cassette. So we're ready to swap everything to the motor wheel. Let's show you that one. So now we have the rear wheel ready. We installed the cassette, we have the disc. We have to swap the tire because we want that tire. We already removed all the air. Make sure you remove all the air first. Undo the little metal ring that holds the valve in place and just work around the tire to take it off of the bib. So 
So this is our tire. Um, most tires also have a direction of rotation or at, at least a suggested rotation direction. So we have to take note of that. And if, it, if it's gonna rotate like that, brakes are always on the left side. Brakes are on the left side, so this wheel is rotating like this. That means that the tire and the wheel rotation match. Make sure you put half of the tire on and make sure you push it towards the deeper side of the rim. That'll make it much easier to install the, both the tube or if you're running tubeless, the other bead. Then look for the bob hole and put the tube in. So we're ready to mount the full wheel onto the frame. And this will be like the only real different thing that we're doing today, because everything else is just normal bicycle stuff that you can find even online. Tons of videos for that. For this step, just make sure that the straight faces in the axle of the motor are aligned with the slot in the frame. So in this particular frame, the slot is pointing vertically. So we want the flat faces here to be vertical. We will put the nuts in place, but but just like very far away so that we have space to maneuver. So just like installing any rear wheel, you have to make sure that the chain goes on the cassette, so pull the cassette back, the, the radiator back. And then you have to make sure that the disc aligns with the brake pads so that it goes in between the pads. And then, yeah, your rear motor is in. Tighten the both knots. They don't have to be crazy tight, just... And then you'll have to route the wire to the battery. Depending on how you're mounting the battery on your frame, the wire could go up or down. It really depends on how you're mounting it. Some people are considering mounting it on the rear rack. So just find a nice way to route it. We put the chain back on and uh, it's on. It'll fall into gear whatever gear we had, and it's good to go. So the wheel is tight, the chain is on. At this point, we would recommend to recheck caliper alignment because you changed the rotor to another wheel, or if you have rim brakes to, to realign your pads to your rim, just to make sure that everything goes smooth. After this point, we would install the battery and the sensor, which we already showed you how to do that, and this bike would be ready to pop some wheelies. See you on the trails.